you know, I'm pretty numb to the fact the way the NBA is working now. I said at different situations before that I wanted to, you know, be there long term and it didn't work out. So I understand. Jared Andrew Bayless, born August 20th, 1988. It feels like the end of a small era now when you watch the NBA and don't see guys like OJ Mayo, Tyreek Evans, Brandon Jennings, John Wall, or even Derrick Rose much, leaving guys like Russell Westbrook and Eric Gordon, the last of the late to early 2010s, still hanging on to a basketball career. For me, as a former point guard shooting guard, I was and still am a fan of watching elite talent at the position, but there was just something about that era of guards that was breathtaking to see. For me, it was the first time the NBA had ever seen point guards that explosive, mixed with speed, quickness, size, and as advanced in their basketball development. It seemed like every year a new point guard amateur star was coming in with the potential to become a superstar in the game. One guy many don't remember from that ultra-athletic point guard era is Jared Bayless. At one point, he and Derrick Rose were my favorite point guards to watch, and he eerily reminded me of Rose in certain instances. Those two I just knew were going to be special in the league, as they had all the necessary skills to do so when you factor in being high draft picks, more minutes in an NBA game, open floor, and the go-get-yours style of NBA play versus college. Derrick Rose was Derrick Rose. He was generational and went on to have a precedent-setting start to his career before injuries brought him down more than a few notches. But Jared Bayless, to me, was not too far behind. I remember his hoop mixtape in high school being one of the best I've seen still to this day. He was unstoppable in high school, two-time Gatorade State Player of the Year in 2006 and 7, and McDonald's All-American in 2007 that averaged 38 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists his junior year, and 33, 7, and 6 the next. At that point, there was nothing that could have told you Bayless wasn't destined to be a star. He had one and done an NBA high draft pick written all over his game. It was just a matter of time. He would become one of the many early entry players in the one and done beginnings and NBA lottery pick at 11 to Indiana before quickly traded to the Portland Trailblazers. From then on, you could see the potential slip away from Bayless and in his first five NBA seasons, he had already played for four teams and a part of five counting Indiana. Things never became much different for the Arizona guard as the rest of his career was a journey from team to team, expectation after different expectation, and something in or out of his control would always get in the way. Jared Bayless, no question in my mind, was supposed to be a star, at least a one-time all-star, but that never happened. Here's why. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get him. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Jared Bayless was a 6 foot 3 point guard shooting guard from Phoenix, Arizona, the son of an academic and a doctor and brother of a Morehouse grad on academic scholarship. He calls himself the black sheep of the family since he was the only who chose to focus on being an athlete. It was a great decision as early on basketball came natural to him. He had size on that level, one of the most athletic high school point guards ever, and at a program that clearly moved as Bayless moved. He was a four-year starter that made the All-State team every year and as mentioned the State Player of the Year in back-to-back -back seasons as a junior and senior. He left school as the state's all-time leading scorer and an honor roll student headed to the University of Arizona to build on their point guard U legacy and begin his candidacy as a potential one-and-done prospect. He came into Arizona and was immediately their best player along with Chase Buttinger. The Wildcats went 19-15 and that season and were eliminated in the first round of the tournament. But Bayless was great. 19.7 points a game, 4 assists, 1 steal, 40% from 3 attempting 5 a game at 35 minutes per will definitely get you drafted and high at that. Stun number 1. Drafted to the Blazers
And drafted high, Bayless did on June 26, 2008, 11th overall and lottery even though many believed he should have been taken sooner in the draft and would have been higher if any other year. But to me, the year was perfect and 11th overall wasn't the problem. It was what team ended up with him. I still wish Indiana didn't trade him after drafting him even though they had Jared Jack and a young TJ Ford when he was still just 25 and a valuable player at 15 and 5 that season. Portland was just a bad fit at the time and for some reason until Dame got there they hadn't had a lottery drafted point guard be good for them since trading for Dame and Stoudemire. Mainly though it was because the team already had Brandon Roy. Please remember this was still the era where most teams had their one star guy then everyone else just filled the roles around them. Roy was the man in Portland by 08-09, a two-time All-Star and NBA Rookie of the Year. For Portland, they had what they thought was their Kobe Bryant and he played the part well when healthy. Roy's playstyle was pretty much similar to Bayless in that they both needed the ball large parts of the possession and shot first, asked questions or pass later. As it did with Sebastian Telfair, Portland around those times didn't seem to like playing their lottery point guards extended minutes and I believe that hurt them both, especially Bayless because he actually had a guy on his team in Roy that was a proven star and franchise face. He struggled without the ball in his hands and his production surprised many at just 4 points a game his first year in 12 minutes and 8 points a game at 17 the next. He was traded after 71 games to the Hornets October 2010 as the Blazers decided to continue on with Roy as their lead guard. Had he initially began his career elsewhere, who knows what that immediate confidence instilled by his team could have done. Stunt number 2 The Black Hole Jared Bayless has always struggled with one thing, not doing much more than scoring. At least in the NBA anyway, because he did many other things in his time as an amateur, it's what got him drafted so high in the first place, even though it might be a snub to him. The name black hole in basketball often refers to a player that you pass the ball and upon receiving it they hold onto it for far too long and most times that's where it stops before a shot is put up. A Milwaukee Bucks announcer began calling Bayless this in 2014-15 and couldn't have been more accurate. To me, Jared Bayless could have been much better at the shooting guard position. Only thing is, he never had the height or even arm length to compete on defense with NBA shooting guards. He also didn't play much defense, usually at the bottom in defensive player efficiency. For his career, he averaged 2.9 assists a game and only once had a season he averaged at least 4 assists, never 5 or more on average in any season. He didn't pass, rebound, play defense for the lead guard position or for the most part given the chance to, mostly on teams that already had their guy. Stunt number 3 Injuries Again like Derrick Rose, Jared Bayless also struggled over his career with injuries that eventually took his career away altogether. In his 11 year NBA career, he's played at least 80 games just once, 70 games 5 times and by 30 years old he was leaving the league for good on a surgically repaired torn ligament in his wrist that required surgery and ended his season in 2016-17 before 73 games over two seasons and two teams to close it out. Toe, knee, ankle, wrist, you name it. His best opportunity came in 2016-17 when he was signed by the Sixers for three years $27 million to come in and play off the ball and on with rookie Ben Simmons being eased in. Simmons wound up getting hurt on the last day of training camp in 2016, injuring his foot and being told that would end his true rookie year. Bayless stepped in and only managed 3 games that year, missing the team's first 13 games and by December he was in such pain in the wrist, the team decided to shut him down the rest of the season. He may not have had the big injuries like D-Rose, but many small ones that added up and took away time on the floor. 
It also took away his athleticism and potential as a shooter and playmaker, eventually his career in 2019. All in all, Jared Bayless was fun to watch. He didn't make the noise his peers did and his career flew much under the radar, but he's been fine since leaving the NBA early at just 30 years old, finishing college, getting into real estate, and continuing his philanthropy as he transitions nicely to life after the league. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy Jay-Z Stunted Growth, and I'm out.